call the meeting to order at 7.03. Uh, first order of business is presentation uh, by CPAC. Aja and Holly. Yeah. Hello. You're up. I'm Holly Johnson. I'm the co-chair of the district CPAC Special Education Parent Advisory Council. Um, we are submitting this report tonight on, as part of uh, CPAC's duties required by law in Massachusetts. And this is our first year doing our annual report. Um, we just officially became an official CPAC with bylaws and board members about a year ago in March um, 2020. And it's been an interesting first year for us, a difficult year for everybody. And we wanna thank all the teachers and everyone, support staff, everyone who's just been worked so hard for our kids this year. And they've done really a great job and we're really appreciative. Um, this year we worked with administration around COVID planning to get IEP students as much in-person learning as possible. And overall the district, our district did such a great job getting in-person learning really for all students, particularly those on IEPs. Um, of course, IEP students will still take longer to catch up and adjust to changes. And um, we would hope that these needs be considered in the future um, during programming and budgeting plans. And we recommend that the district provide professional development and training on managing behavioral issues to all teachers. With support from the special ed department, we were able to hold our monthly meetings and workshops remotely via Zoom. The first portion of our meetings are open to everyone and it's usually a presentation and some updates and that's followed by a private support group for caregivers. We recently added um, what we're calling coffee and conversation, um, a chat that's um, in the mornings via Zoom once a month on Tuesdays. And we also recently got our welcome packet together and it is on the district website now, which is great. Um, so we appreciate all the support we've had from the district administrators this year and all you school committee members. Thank you for having us at so many of your meetings and listening to us. We appreciate that. Um, we have regular board members have regularly attended this special ed strategic planning committee meetings and we've met with various administrators to discuss um, COVID planning, elementary technology, elementary professional development, frontier IEPs, 504s and disability inclusion. And we've had administrators, principals, and staff, um, and school committee members attend our meetings over the course of the year with some of them giving presentations. Um, we do have some concerns regarding the SPED program um, as it's our job to review it. And our concerns are around compliance, uh, documentation, communication, and training to various degrees throughout the different schools in the district. The district has um, a really good procedures and policies manual. Uh, it's difficult to find on the website, but I'm sure that's going to be fixed. Um, we would hope that professional development is given on that procedures manual to all teachers and service providers, and that the document is distributed to parents and teachers on a yearly basis. Um, we also recommend that IEP meetings can be more streamlined using the meeting summary template that is in that district's uh, procedures manual and that the district-wide anti-racism initiative continues to include a variety of mon minority populations, including students with disabilities. Um, state data. So if family, staff, or community members feel that a school is not meeting legal requirements, they can file a complaint with DESE using DESE's problem resolution system or PRS, and that investigates the complaint and determines whether or not a school is in compliance with the law. Um, due to delay at PRS, we do not have their official data, and we have not heard from any families in Conway um, saying that they filed a complaint. Families can also contact the Bureau of Special Education Appeals, the BSEA, about special education concerns, and then the BSEA conducts due process hearings and renders rulings and decisions. The BSEA does not do data for individual schools and district why they say they've received 11 notifications of rejected IEPs and provided one informational training for our district in the past year. Although um, it's been clear that the district wasn't reporting all the unsigned um, IEPs and the rejected or partially rejected IEPs to the state and the state would then send families an informational packet 
So um, the district needs to send that so that the families can get the informational packet. And that wasn't um, happening all the time. Um, family data. So there are 326 students on IEPs in this district. About 31 of those are at Conway, um, making about 23% of the total student population at Conway. With three SPED teachers, that makes the IEP student to teacher ratio 10 to 1. And I'm just going to say that we, the CPAC doesn't see a lot of Conway families and we don't hear a lot from Conway families. So we have no complaints to report from Conway families. <laughs> um, but I'm just going to briefly go over the, the data that we collected from other families um, and what we are recommending just sort of district wide for all elementary schools. Maybe Conway's already doing some of this stuff and that's why we don't <laughs> hear from your families. I don't know. Um, so when we did hear the same concern from multiple families, we included it in our report. And um, overall, the teachers and IAs um, are just doing a great job and, and they create a wonderful sense of community and um, personal relationships. It's really a strength in our district. Um, we, we are concerned that teachers are overloaded with IEP paperwork and meetings and lengthy assessments, um, which can lead to missed services for students and teacher burnout. And on a, a sort of a district administrative level, there are concerns that um, with documentation and adherence to legal timelines and state and federal laws make it very clear what documentation is required and when it needs to be provided to caregivers. And we have heard numerous, numerous violations of these laws and the frequency varies among schools. Um, it may sound like a paperwork issue, but it leads to delays, sometimes serious delays in um, services and evaluations. Our recommendations for the elementary schools is that each school uses an IEP timeline cheat sheet um, that is distributed to families and teachers on a yearly basis that just kind of spells out when everything is due for families and, and evaluations and when IEPs are supposed to come out. It's just like a one pager. And we also are recommending that the district hires a SPED team leader for the elementary schools. Most school districts, as well as Frontier, have a SPED team leader to deal with IEP paperwork, um, scheduling meetings and evaluations, but the elementary schools do not, although we just left the Sunderland meeting and we've been getting someone, which is kind of exciting. Um, so this would reduce the workload for our SPED teachers, allowing them to focus more on teaching and make our school, um, all our schools more attractive to highly, highly qualified applicants and decrease the burnout risk for our current special education teachers. And that's all I have for Conway. And if you have any questions, I'd be happy to try and answer them. Thank you. Um, Holly, I don't have a question, but I just want to say thank you so much. The CPAC here in Frontier Regional, I, I just think it's such a tremendous asset to have. And I think that like forming into this official entity is is like a really high value. Uh, so I want to thank you and Aja and everybody that's involved. Um, you said like three over three hundred families, you know, three hundred over three hundred students yeah. on IEPs, and to have this kind of support and um, just the care that your report that I read like. I, don't know, I just want to thank you so much, basically. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Hallie and Aisha, I, I, I maybe after me, I'd love to clarify a little bit to the special ed teacher student relationship because we have the WINGS program. And so our special ed teacher actually service it. You know what I mean? It, it doesn't come out completely. So, but we can chat later about that. I don't know if that's even, even in, you know, even something you're looking for in terms of reporting that, but just in case. Okay. But thank you. Thank you also for the report. We appreciate thank you. it. I always enjoy the meetings. Thank you. Did I see correctly that there's a um, IEP rights webinar coming up on Monday? That uh, that CPAC put out. Yeah, cool. So just giving that a shout out as well. Thank you. Do you um, happen to have a breakdown of the 326? How many are middle school and how many are high school? Or 
Just curious. Asia, do you have that in front of you? I don't have it in front of me. I do. Um, so the 31 is just at Conway. So French yeah. has 125 IEP students, but we didn't break it down by town at Frontier. Yeah, okay. Funny enough, I was once back in the day a special education team leader for Frontier. Remember those days, Darius? <laughs> it was a while ago. Um, but anyway, it was uh, well utilized. Um, so thank you for your report. We appreciate it. Thank you. And the work you're doing to support families and students. Thank you. All righty. We are on to, uh, if there are no other questions, uh, on to approving minutes from our March 18th meeting. Can I have a motion to approve those minutes? Yes. All right. Second. I'll, uh, I'll second it. All righty. And roll call Very still. Good. Got it. We would need to get back in person, people. Next <laughs> month, maybe. We are. That's a, right. that's an actual thing. The governor's the governor's executive uh, order of emergency expires June fifteenth. After that, we have to do live meetings again. Oh, good. All right. Um. So roll call. Phil. Yes. Michael. Yes. Denise. Yes. Ashley. I didn't look and see if we have Ashley. All right. And I'm a yes too. All righty. So we have approved our minutes. We are on to financial statements and we signed the warrants. Yes. Uh, I don't have much of a uh, update this month. I did send you out a short report and the expense summary. So if you have questions, I'm happy to take them. Um, the warrant signed electronically, there were seven, totaling $57,113.32. Um, otherwise, we're sort of at this point in the year where, where we are analyzing um, general fund expense accounts as well as revolving fund expense accounts and trying to determine um, if all of our POs are in the system and our funds are encumbered. Um, where we have savings, where we need to move things around, uh, checking account balances, those kinds of things. Uh, I do know in Conway, the school lunch, uh, the town has already notified me that the account is technically in the red already. So we will have to rectify that by year end. We have to at least have that at a zero balance. So uh, I'm working on that final number based on what our revenue is for the next two months and our expenses are. We had talked about earlier in the year moving school lunch wages onto the general fund earlier uh, and decided not to do that and sort of ride this out and see how it went. Um, you know, we're certainly not bringing in enough revenue there to cover all of those expenses. So there are savings from general fund. We don't have to dip into any other revolving funds such as school choice. Um, you know, for example, we have a savings in the transportation line because we renegotiated our contract with the way that the school year was set up this year for transportation. So uh, those are the kinds of things that we're working on. Also looking at early childhood for what our enrollment will be next year and what our revenue projections are. So I'll have all of that for you and update on that um, in June with some more details there. Uh, the other thing I just wanted to give you an update on is the COVID spending. Um, Conway has spent about $120,000 on COVID related expenditures. That is uh, not been paid from any of our local funding sources. It's either been uh, federal or state grants or um, town funding. And the town actually did give us a second round of Municipal CARES Act. Um, the initial allocation was about 50,000 and they're covering another 25,000 on top of that. And then we have about 45,000 in grants we've received through DESE from federal funding. So um, we're really thankful that we were able to take care of all of those expenses outside of budget and uh, revolving funds. Um, so that's a little bit of update. There's a couple of other things that are finance related, but that's just the monthly financial until we get to them on the agenda. All righty. Um, and I'm sure you have a balance sheet on COVID funds and ha have we had to use, does that cover all our expenses? Yeah, I, I don't think we've purchased much from budget. Um, you know, we've really been very fortunate to have other funding sources. 
Uh, and we have had to, you know, there's reporting you have to do to the state. The town does right. some of it. We do some of it depending on where it comes through. Um, but we have been keeping track of everything. And, you know, we've been really lucky that we haven't had to dip into general funds or our own school choice funds. Absolutely. Great. Thank you, Shelley. Um, public comment. I don't think I got an email about public comment other than our presentation. Darius, did I miss anything? There was none. Okay. Great. Reason. Thank you. On to unfinished business. COVID-19 update. Yeah. So, I mean, there really wasn't an update until yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> we were cruising right along. But um, you know, yesterday, the governor made kind of surprise us all. So just kind of following the politics, kind of uh, nobody, we were not aware that they were going to make the changes to elementary outdoor recess and class time, um, changing the uh, allowing students to have their mask off even inside of six feet. Um, so that kind of caught people by surprise. We're in an okay place in our district. Um, and I say that meaning that we don't have MOAs wrapped around that where other districts do. So they're kind of, you're gonna see in the newspaper a lot of emergency meetings where they have to have action from the school committee in order to change that because they have an agreement with the association. So um, for those watching, which is nobody right now, but they're watching us later, um, the um, I wrote a note to the school committee that says that I am going to, um, our current policy says following the guidelines set by Department of Education and um, Department of Public Health. And so since they changed their recommendations, I'm going to follow those in our policy. Next month, I'll bring a new, an updated policy for you to vote on to get us through summer. And then we have to figure out what we're gonna do in the fall. And I don't know what that looks like yet. Just kind of being blunt. Um, you know, we could be having no mask policy at all, or we could have certain situations. I don't know, the, the new, new wild west. You so, don't have a crystal ball yet, huh? No, no. Once you think you, it's, it's it's like the state. Once we have things going just smooth, they drop in something, right. something different for us to tackle. Um, just keep you, know, you on your toes. They go, and I just gonna say kudos to to uh, you know Kristen and the and her faculty there. They just kind of they jumped right on it and started making adjustments right away. Who um, the kids were very excited. They kind of used it as a PR stunt on me um, to make it happen fast. Um, I did say across the district they're taking a couple of days to get it done, but Conway got it kind of out of the gate was able to make the adjustments with this. Very small Mover. thing you have to consider. Like when Movers you, and shakers at Conway Group. You could hear the students cheering all across the building. I just, I really want to be the one to tell them with, with the staff there to see their expressions. <laughs> that's awesome. And there's a few, and Kristen, you, you reported there's a few that are still wearing their masks and that's fine. It's a teachable yeah. moment for us to teach others that, you know, we're going to accept everybody's you know, position and how they're feeling because it, it's, it's a weird thing. I don't know if people are watching it. It's weird because it's like you've been told to do right. this and now all of a sudden it's okay or is it okay? And, you know, so. I don't yeah. know. So, I mean, I, I mean, I think the fact that the governor announces that we're uh, on track to meet the state's vaccine goals bodes really well for the fall and that, um, it bodes well for a mask-free future in the near future, I think. You know what I didn't mention at the Sunderland meeting? Shame on me. But um, we are also doing a vaccination clinic on Friday at Frontier. So sixth grade, where I send messages to all the sixth grade parents as well. It's 12 and up, so I did sixth grade and up. Um, did you do a 12th grade? I mean, 12-year-olds there. Um, and so we're filling those slots. Anybody watching, which is no one right now, there are slots available. We'll even take walk-ins. So we want to get arms to, to fill with shots. That's awesome. It's a very easy sign-up process, too. So that's good. That's actually posted on the town website right now in Conway. So excellent. That's awesome. Clayton was the last one, and he got it the first day they opened up Pfizer. So we're one happy pod. <clears throat> um, all righty. Thank you, Darius. Do we have an anti-racism and equity committee update? I see Kelsey here. All righty. I think Kelsey. On, Kelsey. Yes, I am. Um, and I do apologize for not having my camera. Um, my home laptop does not work like that. Um, so we're kind of wrapping things up here at the end of the year. Um, we just had our first in-person discussion group last Wednesday at Frontier. 
Um, and one of the topics that we invited the students to discuss is to kind of think about next year um, and what their hopes would be for what we can do. Um, and they brought up the idea of, well, how can we be more connected with the elementary schools? Um, how can we help some of these discussions happen there? Um, can we do some kind of mentoring with um, these younger students who are ready to have these conversations. Um, so it was really exciting to, to have the kids um, bring that up themselves and talk about it. And um, it's, it's exciting to see that there's interest among our high schoolers to have that connection with um, our younger students at the elementary schools, because I think, um, I think that that kind of partnership and that kind of uh, mentoring and role modeling could be really uh, beneficial for both our high schoolers and our elementary schoolers. Um, so that's an exciting thing that's hopefully coming down the pike next year. Um, we are going to have one more full committee meeting before the end of the year um, to discuss priorities for next year so that when we come back to school in the fall, we can kind of hit the ground running. Um, so I wanted to give you all a chance to ask any questions about the work that we've done this year um, and also let me know if, there are any, if there's anything that you would like the committee as a whole to be considering um, or thinking about as we're talking about priorities for next year. Any feedback, committee? Kristen? Yeah, so I've been, uh, um, Kelsey's been on the committee with me and um, I, I'm a, I've, I've been a big fan of uh, connecting the high school with the elementary school. So I'm thrilled to hear that, Kels. Great. Michael, you had something? Um, you know, as an ed well, as, as an educator myself, I've, I've been thinking a lot about how students form identity and like how they identify themselves and their relationship to their community. And I wonder if like identifying as anti-racist is like, it's going to be this identity that kids are growing up with, you know? Um, so that might be a powerful uh, thing, especially for like these younger kids at the elementary school. Um, I'm thinking about my son who's headed from fourth grade to fifth grade and he, he thinks about the world so much. So I know that he would certainly be welcome to have these high school students come and talk about uh, the work that they're doing. Yes, exactly. Um, I think a lot about bullying. Um, I know when I was a, a student in elementary school and high school, like it really, that wasn't a term that really got talked about. We, there was, it's not like we ever had anyone explain to us, this is what bullying is. This is what being a, a bystander means. Um, and now that is such a part of curriculum in schools everywhere, you know, and any, elementary school kid, you walk up to and say, hey, what's a bully? And they can tell you and they know all of these things because it's just part of, it's just part of the culture and part of what we grow up with. Um, and I think that that's certainly the, the end goal for this anti-racism work is that it really just becomes part of the fabric of our community um, and just part of how our students interact with the world. I was kind of curious about maybe the maybe the elementary school kids might be more advanced in some ways than the, mm -hmm. than the middle school and high school kids who might be already entrenched in certain behavior patterns or, you know, ways of looking at the world. So whereas they're not maybe quite as tainted yet in, in the elementary school. It's so, certainly possible. Um, yeah. So. Anyway. Yeah, I think that I think that partnership has benefits both ways, definitely. Right. Yeah, definitely. All righty. Any other feedback, questions? All righty. Thank you very much for the update. Thank you very much for your support. Thank you. And uh, on to our playground update, Kristen. Oh, you're on mute. Sorry. <laughs> So you can help me out here. The build, bidding process has begun. We had an informal walkthrough last week, um, and we had a few vendor, a uh, few people show up for the walkthrough. 
And Shell, do you want to take it from there in terms of the bidding process? Yeah. Yes. So bids are due on May 28th at two o'clock. That's when the um, bids are received. It's being done through an online bidding process. So any vendor who wanted to bid the project had to go through the appropriate site that was in all of our postings, get the required documents, submit the required documents, and then the bids will be opened electronically because we're not accepting sealed bids for this. Um, so that the, I'll have to connect with the town to see when your next meeting is, Phil, in June, because the contract actually has to be approved by the town because it's the town's funds. Um, so if the bids close on May 28th, we should have an award made within, it's been like seven to 10 days, I think, Darius, on the other projects that we're doing. Um, so we'll have a quick turnaround with that. We've already ordered some of the equipment. Uh, so that's in process. I don't know if you've had any of it delivered yet or not, Kristen. Um, but the project is set to start June 14th based on the bid documents. So coming up here quickly and be done by September 17th at the latest. We couldn't ask for a better timeline. That's exciting. J June seventh. June seventh is the Monday. June seventh is the first select board meeting in June, which was which is just on the heels of our June fifth town meeting. Getting a plug in, are you, Phil? Yes. 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 Okay. All right. School committee should be there. Although I don't think we'll have a big budget fight, but certainly good to represent. Now, it's not going to be a fight, but there are going to be questions about yeah. what what the position is that we're at. And just um, yeah. I, I would expect someone to ask what a teacher interventionist is and why is it a good thing kind of a deal. Right. I agree. All righty. We are on to new business. Uh, discussion about charging for early release Friday gap care. Is that Kristen, you or Darius or Shelley? I'll start off and I may have to have Kristen fill me in some of the details because the after school program is different in each school. Um, I do have to say that our viewership has quadrupled. We've got about five years now, so we're, this is very exciting. All right, um, I just want to say that I don't want them to think they, were, they weren't they were noticed. Um, all right, so let me um, share my screen. It's easier for me just to read along. Have a nice little class here. Um, all right. All right. So basically the early release Friday gap care, that's the time when we have early release professional development and we have the students, um, we created a aftercare program between 1.30 and 3 before the out of school time um, that begins at 3 begins. Um, what we are proposing is charging a $5 fee for this child care for students um, between 1.30 and 3. It'll be, money will be used toward a healthy snack. It will also be used toward money going into the out of school time program to pay for staffing that could be used during that time period. Um, currently, you know, the fee for 1.5 hours is below the six hour, six dollars an hour rate typically charged by our out of school time program. We would have scholarship for families with financial hardships and that'd be arranged through principals. Um, and then obviously students can, not obviously, but students have the option of attending the out of school time program starting at three on early release dates. Now, you guys are number four in my my four school committees of elementary schools that, that um, do this. Two things came up in the earlier discussions. I thought I'd just throw them on here rather than waiting for you guys to think them up because um, I know you already thought of these. Um, one was one proposal was they said, well, uh, was said at Waitley was, what if we only charge families who are not in the after school program, which I thought was really an interesting approach. I really appreciate that feedback because Basically, those are families that need the care most likely because of work and that kind of thing. And then we'd be only just adding to that bill to a financial hardship on that kind of thing. So um, I thought that was an interesting approach um, that we could consider changing this uh, changing this uh, uh, proposal to. The other one is, you know, if you have multiple children, can we do less for each additional child? Because if you had three kids in a district, that'd be $15. And that starts to get the little bit, you know, uh, cost prohibitive. So, yeah, overall, I mean, those are the early release days for next year. Um, 20 in total for those days. So, that's my kind of setting the table. Chris, in each um, out of school prime program is different, but do you have a, just a general envelope sense of what do you get for a number of kids who stay till three o'clock 
on those Fridays versus staying all the way through and kind of the, showing that this would affect. Give a general idea of those general numbers. Sorry to put you on the yeah. spot. Uh, we usually have 40 to 50 students that stay between that 1 30 to 3 o'clock time on early release days. And then so that's, all, they all go home or how many are staying through from continuation? Um, I would say 12 to 14 stay on. 12 stay on. The rest go home at 3 o'clock. So parents are really in need of that 1 30 to 3 o'clock care. So the question is, I guess, the, I'll go ahead and ask questions. And, since. I feel like one of the ways we sold this early release was that that would be free. That child care would be free. So, correct. So back, so that would for be those going who need the back on how we sold it to start with, which kind of feels a little not so great. Okay. So I guess the, the idea here is so, Going back eight years or so is when we started this. I think we started my first year as principalship when Marty Barrett became the superintendent. Um, the idea was we'd create this gap care so that we'd create the gap care that allowed um, with, with enrichments and that kind of thing. Remember, that was the kind of the big push. And what ended up happening is we started getting an overflow of this gap care. And so what's happening is that the schools having to use school staff in order to cover that, not being able to release um, all the, the IAs to professional development and such. So it's kind of like the popularity of having fun and wanting to stay through grew and kids were staying through. So it, it kind of becomes the question of, you know, that's why I'm doing it by community instead of by a joint group kind of on this thought because we've been thinking, talking about this for a while, um, is that, you know, what does the community need and what is the obligation of a school to provide childcare versus you know, we have a lot of other communities that do half day professional development. They're not providing child care from 12 to three on those half days for free for every single student to stay through. Because if you build it without a charge and they're having fun because they're doing kind of recess like activities, they're staying. If you build it, they will come. This idea would you know, make people pause to sign up for it and also allow us to put some money toward um, freeing up some of those IAs. So that's the, that's the idea. Um, and I'm not, you know, begging you to go through. I'm just kind of, this is a good time for a reset. But uh, those half days are much more infrequent than the number of days we have. Correct. So. Yeah, and I don't know how many people have changed their work schedule to come pick up at three or how many people are not working on that afternoon. A lot of the students to stay in longer because they asked to, because they're having fun with their friends or for other personal reasons to free up time during the day. Right. Child care. Just think we have long memories in town. They will not miss that beat. So just FYI, it that doesn't have vote the, next um, to this. Oh, sorry. And I'm sorry, it doesn't have vote next to this and all the other committees have tabled it till June. So just FYI, if people want to talk it over and talk it over with people and get the kind of floats and balloons of thought out there as well. So I'm just putting it out there so you don't have to do that tonight. So I, I, I would just like to say that Elaine, I, oh, I kind of, was... oh, sorry, Michael, go ahead. I just wanted to ask how was the five dollars this like yeah. determined? Like was the was there talk of four dollars or two dollars or like how did how was the figure arrived at? You know, we were charging less than the six dollars an hour, um, you know, for the hour and a half. Um, it was a round number, I guess. There's no real we're not trying to um, particularly pay for a certain deficit with it. It was the idea to have a nominal fee for the child care service. It's technically, I mean, if you look at it from an educator point of view, that happens outside the, the school day. You know, school calendar, school is over. But now we're providing a child care service that's out of the school day. And it kind of, so it's, it's all about philosophy, how you want to look at it. You know, it can go either way. And I understand that. Yeah, it's likely if we had professional development days that parents would have to pay for child care. $5 is pretty nominal. But it, is it $6 now? I'm trying to understand that. $6 an hour? No, it's six dollars an hour for the out of school time program. So we were just kind of showing, uh, like, it's for the hour and a half that the gap is. It's six dollars an hour if you're staying from three to four. Uh, you, have to, you have to pay for the whole block. You don't just pay by the hour. But if you break down that block of time, it's six dollars an hour. Of which the after school. I see. So we are adding a fee. Yeah. So. Just want to make sure. Yes and no. If you go with the proposal by weight, oh sorry, Michael. 
Go ahead, Michael. It was five dollars twenty times a year. That would be a hundred dollars for the year. If it was like a two dollar an hour fee, that would be three dollars. So it'd be a sixty dollar fee. I mean, I could see how like a sliding scale would enable some families to to access it without a um, without it being too much of a burden for the year. Um, that will cost you more to figure towards... out and manage a sliding scale. Yeah. You know, and people have to produce documentation of income and, you know, all that stuff that they don't want to do. Yeah. I mean, I don't think, you know, those that will get, right. that will apply or need the financial assistance, certainly that, but and I don't think that's a majority of Conway wow. people. My thing is more... You know, people will remember we said we're going to offer this hour and a half child care, you know, and you won't have to pay for it. And now we're changing that. And, you know, again, I don't think it's a big deal. And if it helps cover costs, I can understand. But it's just that that sense of we got something and now we changed it. But, you know, things change over time, too. So. It wasn't that long ago, right, when we switched over from professional development days to this model, like a few years ago? It was at, it was least, that long ago? at least seven to eight years ago. Wow. Okay. Time flies. Time flies. Because, We're having fun. Because it was a Marty Barrett thing, and so you had, you know, okay. it wasn't done in our first year, so we had one more year of Marty Barrett, two of Lynn Carey. And yeah, I'm in year three, so that's at least six. If it was done in our first year, second year, seven or eight. So that was yeah. quite a while ago. Yeah, getting old. <laughs> so I mean, I I I, I remember the, the 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 promise of of this being free as well, and I remember the basic promise of being a parent, which was that education is supposed to be free and equal, and um, you know that that. It's, it, and like I, you know, I, I, I thought out of school time stuff should be free. I think sport to participate in sports should not require a participation fee. Um, I think be, all of these things are basic and inherent to the education process, and they ought not to be the revenue generating, and that these ought to be the responsibility of the general budget. Um, but the the and so you know, I, I wonder if it's even possible for us to do it. On it, it, you know, because once you set a, a policy up, once you set a program up that's a, that 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 has a fee structure to it, it's never going away, um, and, and it's only going up over time. And um, so, you know, I I wonder whether it's possible for us, just little old Conway, to to do this at uh, no fee. Well, I wonder if you could do it, like uh, if you can make a donation. You might well, actually get more money, you know, versus, you know, billing people or tracking it or whatever. I mean, it's just an idea and we can keep talking about it. But I, you know, you know, kind of passing the hat. But, you know, I mean, here, to, you know, contribute to supplies or this or that. I mean, some people won't, but some people make them, you know, contribute more. But, you know, that's just. No, we're talking five thousand dollars a year, right? Roughly. One th one thing that really, but that happens a lot. Um, that I that I do appreciate and I do love that the kids love being at school is that, um, you know, our IAs, are, you know, cover the the program, and so they are left out of um, professional developments and trainings and things like that. But what happens is we're making calls during the day even because Shelly decided <laughs> that there was going to be something really fun at the program this afternoon and she really wants to stay or Denise um, really wants to hang out with Shelly. So, you know, we get a note that Denise is going to start going to the program. And of course, we love having the kids there. Um, I know we've talked to as an administrative team in the past to see, is there something we could do to prevent that? And again, it's not because we don't love our kids, but we're just, we just don't have, many, we can't get as many staff for the professional development. You, know, you get a new reading program or a writing program, you want everyone trained in it. 
and the, the, the people are doing the small instructional groups and things like that, they're not able to go. Um, so we were trying to figure out as a mat admin team how we can sort of nicely and gently say to parents, please only use the program if you have to, um, because that's one thing that's been happening. The, the program just, you know, the last week when we have water week, I think we have almost the whole school there on that early release Friday. You just yeah, create a bunch of fun. Snack and hang out with their friends, they're going to do it. So. Hi. I have a question um, for students that are in the out of school time program on Fridays. If we didn't have this gap care, like what would those kids do? What program would they be in from 1.30 to 3? We would create that. You know, we wouldn't, we wouldn't be able, you'd have to. The idea is that we provide a service for parents who cannot pick up their kids before 5 o'clock at night because of their because of their work obligations and we create a a day the daycare service that's private that's connected to the school that's part it's public it's public because it's connected to the school but it's a uh, outside the, the basic running of the school we create an after school program that's what we call it but it's basically we're paying for you it's a babysitting service with some extra bells and whistles to it right. and so they have to pay for it so why so why isn't this why isn't this 1.30 to 3 on Fridays part of the out of out of school time programming? Because historically, when we rolled this out, the idea was we had to somehow we didn't we didn't want to charge parents in that kind they of thing because we were selling it. <laughs> and we were also selling it with a bunch of enrichment activities. We were doing enrichment activities and that kind of stuff as well. And, you know, there were there has been a lot of enrichment activities through the years and Conway still does a lot of with that stuff. But the idea of the programming and that kind of stuff. And once you build it, everybody goes, well, send my kid to it. Like, why should I pick them up early? And the idea, it is a psychology thing. You pay for something, you pause before you purchase. If it's free, you grab handfuls. You know what I mean? And so it's the same idea with the after school program. You know, maybe it won't change the numbers at all. Maybe the people are like, hey, it's worth five bucks. The kids love it. Um, and then we can able, you know, we can either hire people with that money and, you know, um, you know, subsidize some of the programs with materials or that kind of stuff. But that's the that's the real kind of thing about that is that we built a free program. Why not? Everybody stays up, you know, so trying to change that. But I understand both sides. It's I understand the other side. I understand Phil's kind of point. Like, you know, we're a public service agency for the town. Is it our obligation to provide child care? You know, that, you know, that kind of thing. So it is that balance. But we're trying to make it manageable. <clears throat> Could we survey parents for the upcoming school year? I mean, would that be something mm -hmm. just to get an idea about who would want to take advantage of that? And I don't know, an idea. Well, you know, a lot of people will take advantage of it, but it's, and I don't think five bucks is going to be a deterrent to a lot of people. I still think you'd, you'd get more with the donation, but yeah. You know, like, right. I, I understand, know. but it's not the finances. We're not going after it because we can't afford if it. We we're going were... after it because we're. Go ahead, Michael. Well, I think, if, I think if we're transparent about the costs, like let's say every child decides to stay on Fridays till three and we need this many people to supervise it and that's how much it's gonna cost to pay them and these are the other materials and supplies and food and snacks that we're gonna provide during that time, like we'll have a budget for it. And right, if, if Elaine, like what you're saying, if if it kind of wants to be a PTO type of funded donation thing, I, I but I, if we know what it's costing, I think I, I feel like I have more information. But it's not. Well, the money. I think I think the issue is that again, this was packaged to sell it. You know, like twenty Fridays, you know, versus a few professional development days, and that's a lot of Fridays. That's a lot. That's a lot of time. And we, you know, we get presentations every year about how much is accomplished in that time. Kristen tells us how much. Yet I still think there's a lot of people that think that's really inconvenient. And I just think you almost invite that voice to get stronger by starting to charge for it. And maybe all those people that, that were there when it started are, you know, kids have aged out and are done. But I just... It's a big time commitment. 
you know, a very serious time commitment. Um, and then if you start, so it's, and an inconvenience. I mean, my kids are old enough now, but when my kids were young, that's, that's a lot for families that have to get their kids. So I don't know. I just, I, I, I'm kind of of the mind. I wouldn't mess with it. I just think it's going to invite all sorts of feedback that I'm not sure it's worth five bucks or $5,000 for, but you know, maybe that's just me. So I guess, I guess the, the, the I'm one leaning th towards, I'm leaning towards the lane. Yeah. So I guess the one thing that I'm not real clear about is like, why ahead, just to use Darius's uh, analogy, like, why why it's not a good thing to encourage that they grab big handfuls of this in particular um so it's about scale so if you have 20 kids staying after you know i can i can use two adults maybe three to take care of them you have 60 kids staying after now all of a sudden i need an administrator because somebody's going to do something wrong in that two-hour period at least frequently where they're going to need backup and support and parents are going to be called regarding an incident you know, you're going to have nursing that's all of a sudden it's going to increase. Everything on, as of scale goes in. So now you have a bunch of people who are supposed to be doing something else that are going to have to get pulled away. When you start talking about 100 kids, you know, I don't know maybe it's just water day, there's 100 kids. You just all of a sudden you don't have, we don't have the resources to, to keep all the kids at school and pull all the teachers away to do trainings and not be disturbed. You know what I mean? And so that's kind of the, and so you build it, they will come. The idea is to put a, you know, the hesitation, it's not about the money alone. The money is, you know, I guess we could do the, another thing is just reach out to families and say, please take your kids home if you don't need to care. I mean, you could try that, but that's, I don't know. That's I, I politely it. tried that. Oh, you did? <laughs> Bring in your own snacks. <laughs> well, pretty much saying, you know, um, not all of our staff can go to PD and, you know, if you really need it, but the, like I said, the kids just love to go, you know, which is, I understand, but I think um, we should make it the hour and a half should be study hall. <laughs> <laughs> Homework catch up. They time. would school building. Yeah, my kids would still want to come. They love their school. <laughs> that uh, would still decline some numbers, but anyway, all right. Well, we'll think about it. We're bringing it back up in June, right? Yep. Um, but maybe we can talk to our friends with kids that age who are partaking um and put some thought into this so all righty we are on to review of director of business uh contract so on this particular one um other committees went to executive session to discuss so they put it at the end of their thing um it's up to you how you want to do that um you do have to vote it in public session but if you wanted to talk about any details of the negotiation I'll Good put a vote day. in for Shelly anytime, anywhere, any place. So I, I, I don't know about the rest of them, but we're lucky to have her and she's improved things tremendously. So All right. so I'll give a brief overview. Um, the, the committee did come. Who was on the committee? Phil was, right? Was it Phil? Yeah. Um, do you want me to give this review, Phil? All right. Um, the committee um, um, did negotiate a five-year contract to get, and give her a bump in the first year so that she was comparable to um, other um, um, directors of business finance um, in, the, in the Valley. And, um, and then after that, did a two and a half increase the years following. So the bump came in the first year of uh, approximately $10,000. And then after that went to two and a half percent. The rest of the contract as follows the rest of the administration. There's no change from previous, the previous contract or um, and benefits that the other administrators receive. Sounds like a bargain. Anybody else? Yeah. And just so, so, so we, we did we did um, offer and come to a five year agreement. I don't know if Darius was clear on that, but that's and just so that you know, just so that we can be really clear, you do that. You do a five year agreement just because a lifetime agreement is is illegal, and 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 so. Um, so, so that, well, so that's so, really what it means, right? Yeah, that's what it means. Like yeah, okay. you don't give those out. Like you, you, like you don't, the, nobody gets those except Shelly and Darius. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, um, so yeah. So yeah, it's because of excellence. 
and mm -hmm. and still and still in terms of the overall salary survey schedule in the county and in of our comparables she, this just brings shelly up to you know more or less average in salary whatever but and, and comparable directly to gateway but still 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 much less than franklin tech and um you know, uh, Greenfield and whatever. So well, I'm glad we don't have to pay her per meeting or she'd really get a big bump. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, so yeah. Anyway, any other discussion, feedback? We need a vote for this. Yes. Yes, you do. And then they'll All be right. sent to you. To, then they'll be sent to the chair to sign. All right. Can I have a motion to approve the um, director of business? administration's contract for five years yes so move second second all righty all I'll in favor it. great all in favor phil yes michael yeah michael yes uh at, um sorry denise yes, yes. and me uh, i'm in favor also and we do shelly i truly mean it we're lucky to have you especially in this crazy time and how many budgets, whatever you've had to do i mean it's just you're you you're a catch i'm glad we have you here with us thank you yes. yeah so plan and, with, your and with your vote you are number five so it is a, it is a done deal awesome all righty and you don't have to go through that for another five years, Shelly. There you go. Um, it's our... so painful. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and now we need a capital improvement warrant request. Who is informing us of this? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'll do it for you, Phil. I'll do it for you, Phil, so you don't have to wear that other hat, okay? <laughs> so we received the, uh, the warrant for the town meeting and article three has us receiving, asking for raising appropriate transfer available funds that way provide 71,000 for capital expenses of Conway Grammar School. Well, that 71,000 is not the number um, that we sent off to Tom. We'll blame it on him. He's not here to defend himself. Um, and so we, it'll be more, it'll be very difficult for the town to change this. So what we would, we're, suggesting we do is just modify our expenses because it does come up that we we're looking to a soundproof a wall that doesn't seem like it's even possible at this point and we can just slightly adjust um how many classrooms we redo the flooring on am i right on that kristen um we were looking at three we'll just do that change that to two right now we're behind on flooring anyways because we didn't do the library so um right am i right on that as well kristen I probably should have you talk. That was I get Krista to actually ask for things and then we're telling her no. That just does not seem right at all. Well, it's good training. It's good training I so don't she think can. It's good training. I'm for sure me that it is. story needs to be done. I have to be able to say no to her. Okay. The library is going to start on June 14th as well. A lot of happenings, but that will be on this year's, but, this year's warrant. But it, isn't there an opportunity for us to make up the shortfall through either? um school choice or revolving whatever yes. yeah i mean the first thing is you know the way that the article is written is that it says seventy one thousand. it doesn't spell out those projects right so while we've said to the town this is what we want to do right now the generator quote is less than sixty thousand. it could fluctuate a little bit but that would leave some additional money for the flooring so once we know what the generator cost is going to be That'll help us determine how much we can do. And then we can see there might be some savings from this year that we're putting into school choice um, or see, depending what our school choice balance is, if it's something that you guys really support that we go ahead and tackle the last bit. I mean, it's an $8,000 difference right now. And I think, I hope by the time the generator's done, it'll be less than that. Well, are we paying full bulk for the generator? That doesn't seem right. I mean, it's if I, the way I would say it, sell it in the way I will sell it to the town meeting is this is not truly a school's only request. This is a town building and if they want to take care of their facility and make it an emergency site. And especially they've shown they've needed it recently. There um, should be emergency funds for that, not just us. The town should be kicking in for that. 
but the town technically is paying for it for a warrant. So we could just pull this off and say the town's going to buy a generator. But I'm going to, I'll be very clear to say that, that this is, you know, we lose power at the school. I can send the kids home. You guys need a generator for town reasons outside of that. And so, um, and, and you need to invest in your, you know, your community center kind of deal. So that's how I will say it. It's very kind of clear. This is not an educational kind of thing. This is really, we just doing it through this avenue, through the school so that we can take care of the, the purchasing of it and that kind of thing. It also seems there would be other funding than grants for a generator, for an emergency shelter, for a town. I so, prefer to select for it. <laughs> so, I mean, I, so just th there's a lot, there's a lot to all this. I mean, the, the first thing that, that you should know is that, that, that a, a, a capital, a, a capital request item when uh, on behalf of the school made it onto the Conway town warrant without the superintendent, principal, business manager, or school committee knowing anything about it. Um, which boggles the mind. Um, and it's not the way, you know, we're, it, it, it's not ever going to repeat itself, but it's also just not, you know, that, that was, and, and, and a, a lot of it is, you know, is because the town administrator at the time, um, who is now in Dalton, who did work right up until the last day, this was the, the one loose end that he felt that he had. And he tied the loose ends together with what he thought was the right thing, but it was actually a five-year-old estimate from Bob, the previous building uh, uh, frontier fi facilities person about what this year's expenditure looked like. And um, it actually is remarkable that reality tracked so closely with that five-year projection that he ended up um, Did he whatever, but, for any state but, but, or federal but, grants but, for an emergency but, shelter but, for but, generator? But, 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 but the town administrator felt it was very necessary to have a complete budget warrant, everything to pass off to the interim and to the uh, to whatever. And so this was, uh, uh, and you know, that it was also, there, there's sort of like this back channel too, like this um, police chief, fire chief kind of back channel way to get onto the budget that kind of took place because uh, a lot of this, the, the the person in town that knows the most about this generator is our police chief um and our fire chief who knew who were, who were all in favor of it and have assured me that they will stand up and say so um why don't they help pay for it then well this is this is how i mean this is them paying for it it's it no it isn't it's it, gets, it gets stuck on our budget when it should be an emergency it Shelter. comes out. It comes out of our capital stabilization fund, and they're putting thirty something back into it. Um, and next year we'll put, you know, we'll we'll put the rest back into it. Um, but it's not out of the gen the regular budget. And and yes, there should have been grants. Um, uh, there should have been, and there was. I I looked into this after the fact. There the the, the FEMA stuff. That's what this emergency generator. That's why it's necessary because that's our shelter. Right. Um, and they have all these rules that everything's got to work um, for the shelter. Um, so, wh whereas if it was just for the school, the school gets closed and the kids go home and you know, it doesn't need to, you don't need to have everything working. Like, so why don't we put it off for a year and let them come up with the money or find a grant for it? Um, because the grants that were available are of the five to $10,000 nature. And, um, you know, at least that, uh, it's, it's your, it, that that's I could, hard for me to believe that that I could look with all the FEMA money floating around out there. And that's what they they do these mini micro things. Um, uh, and 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 possibly that they're they're um, you know we hopefully with the new chain of uh, uh, with, with the new change in uh, town administrator that will have a more uh, proactive grant writing regime. Well, I'm not in support of Kristen not getting new flooring for the school that the kids are in every day, all day long, versus paying for a, a generator that's not even necessary right. for the kids but, to use. But but uh, Kristen should get her flooring. So kids and are in those rooms all day, every day. And Elaine, I don't I don't think it's quite as bad. So the, the the amount that front that the request that we would have made that we wanted to make or that we that is was of the nature of like 81 or something right and so this is 
uh, this is like a $10,000 shortfall from that. But a big chunk of that $10,000 is the soundproof. It was for a soundproofing thing, which got, which isn't going to happen. So, um, uh, so, so there's some, there's some like leeway in there. It's not quite not getting what we want, but uh, hopefully school choice or whatever. I mean, it's in the warrant. It went out in the mail and we can't raise them that number like on the town meeting floor. You can only lower the number. You um, can't amend it on town re meeting. You floor. can amend it lower or change the language of it, but you can't change the amount higher. Um, it's a $7,000 difference that is being cut from the carpet with the way that the warrant was written. And, and, and I, like I said, the generator quote right now is less. Bill just sent it. I want to say it was like uh, 54,000 or 55,000. So if that number is true, <laughs> which, you know, things are fluctuating like crazy right now in the building industry. So it could go up a little bit, but hopefully there, that will be under 60 to help make up for some of that loss. And I, and I, and I would hope that, 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 uh, you know, that we could make up the rest of it through school choice or revolving. I club. mean, we, we have savings in the transportation budget line alone this year, forget all of the other accounts that might have savings in them. Um, but the, the transportation line we knew was less because we renegotiated our contract. So, you know, we could agree to reallocate those funds for this project right now. It's about $10,000. And I know <clears throat> Kristen, you and I talked about a couple of other projects that we're trying to work on right now and moving some things around and, um, making sure that all of the needs are met throughout the year, but I'd also be happy to take a closer look at this and see how we can make up that difference from this year's budget savings. Well, that makes me feel better. I just think it should be happening. The flooring should be happening over the summer. So it's not something you really put off, right? So, you know, but I defer to Kristen what her priority list is, of course. Um, but well, if we can gain back five thousand from as that dog, <laughs> such a pain. <laughs> if we can gain back five thousand from the generator, even four thousand, you know, a three thousand dollar number or four thousand dollar number, we could even tackle that with next year's budget. You know, and there's always something that we can sort of manipulate a little bit to make it work. I will say, Elaine, I do agree with you that <clears throat> we do need a. We need to explain that this is us in working in cooperation with the other departments that we're going to do it through our department, although this is not the schools yet again asking for a huge chunk of money. This chunk of money is, you know, you know, we were able to offset a lot of other things with COVID money and that kind of stuff this year. We got a big, you know, playground project going. A lot of other money is being spent on the school right now. So this is a year where we can kind of be the conduit for this thing, but don't chalk that up on our list of what you spent on the school. But I agree with you on that because it's like, I don't really want this. I, you may like to have it. You always like to have it as a backup, but it's not making our education any better. Are, are you going to make that point on the, the town meeting? I will make part of that point. I just, I need someone else to back up me, back me up on that. I don't know if, it'll, you know, Phil, you'll do it or whatever. But the idea that I just want to say is like, this is not the school's request and I'll do my best. I, I'll say something like I just said here. Yeah. Um, but if I don't do it well, someone's got to jump in and say, dare you. Okay. But I'll, I'll, I will, I'll do that. Okay. All yeah. right. And just the, the other, the one other thing though, Elaine, just so everybody knows, everybody that was involved in like making that warrant, like the way that it is right now, everybody meant well and everybody thought they were doing the right thing. So I'm kind of like trying to be easy on everybody. So, um, so that's all. Well, that's nice for a change from you, Phil. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> there you go. All right. So we need a vote. Can I have a motion? Yes, I move to approve the warrant article capital request that is already on the Conway Town warrant that has been mailed to everybody. What do you meant to say for $71,000? 
Yes. For the purchase of a generator and floor upgrades. Yes. Exactly that too. So that's the motion. Somebody's got I'll to second, second it. it. There you go. I'll second it. I'll do it. You're muted, Elaine. Michael, you're in favor. I have a first and second. Roll call. Michael. Yes. Phil? Yes. Denise? Yes. And I'll go along with it to be a team player. So it's unanimous. All righty. Uh, we are on to reports. Um, I do not have a report. Is there a collaborative report? No, I don't have anything. Okay, no problem. They're in the process of hiring a director. The, the focus has been largely on that. That's a hard, hard task. Uh, and Kristen sent us her report. Kristen, you want to give us the highlights? Uh, highlights, we hired a new uh, PE teacher by the name of Chris Williams. I don't know if people are familiar with him. He's... Um, um, he's, uh, he's graduated from frontier. I think, you know, we're going to miss Mrs. M and her energy and her enthusiasm. Um, but he seems like he's going to be a great fit for Conway grammar school. Um, I sent everyone the, um, school improvement plan update. If anyone has any questions, uh, thank you again for supporting the uh, summer program at Conway grammar school. Very successful when we moved it over to Conway. When it was at Deerfield, not many of our children traveled to Deerfield, but since we've been back at Conway um, with your support, we've, our, we've, we've had um, so many kids that we've been able to reach and it's really helped that summer gap. So thank you for that. Um, and um, just as you know, I, I just want to do a you know shout out to our students, our heroes who, who have worked really hard through this COVID and um, our staff who's really moved mountains. Um, all of our children are back except three. Um, our staff is back, and um, we've been back from for a long time, as you know. And, and you know, um, we're ending a very tiring year, but it, you know, it was a great year. We've gotten closer and tighter than ever before as you go through a pandemic. And as always, thank you for your support. The staff is always talking about the school committee support, so thank you. If anyone has any questions about my report, just let me know. Just I saw uh, Miss Lovechuck is retiring. Paulette. Paulette is retiring. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my Paulette. God, what a loss that is. Oh, we're heartbroken. Yes, yes, yes. Exciting uh, for her. Yeah. Um, yeah. We're excited um, for her. Arlene's going to, she has some, some two new grandchildren, brand new. Um, and we're waiting to see if Mr. Giffield will, will be returning or retiring. And we miss him. We miss him very much too. We hired Jamie Jackman, who is um, in sixth grade, along with Brennan Bean, and just doing a fantastic job. Um, but of course, we miss our big guy. You know, those um, are some hard so shoes to fill. But we support whatever he decides to do. Obviously, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Thank awesome. you. Awesome. All righty. If there is nothing else, and we do not need executive session because we took care of our business in public, correct? Areas. Yeah, that's true. But I do have one piece that um, I need to. The next meeting is set for June fifteenth, which is the same night as Wheatley Town Meeting. They have it on a Tuesday night, believe it or not. So um, you can have a meeting without me, but I have to go to the town meeting. And I'm taking Shelly with me, so <laughs> so I think we need to move the meeting. Can we move it to the seventeenth? Yes. That would, because that's a, our usual Thursday at six. Is that our um, retreat day? Yeah, but the second day is a work, it's a work afternoon. Uh, do you don't want to do it on your retreat day? Sorry, it's not my call. I was just making sure I wasn't. Yeah. We weren't missing them. What about the week before? Four. We could try to, we could, the week before is the last week of school. Oh, okay. Which, you know, again, again, I'd ask, um, I would ask Kristen, like, you probably have stuff almost every night that week, right? Well, um, you can't have, 
I think Did Tuesday and Thursday, Darius. I think we have something Tuesday night and then sixth grade graduation Thursday night, but Monday, Wednesday, we don't have anything in the evening. I, I don't mind that at all if that's what the committee decides. Monday might be good. The day before? The Monday, schedule. Would work. Monday would work for me as well. Monday, Monday. the 14th or Monday the 7th? Monday the 14th. Fourteen. I'm fine with that. Are we going to do in person or remote? That would be Monday the fourteenth is the last legal day that you could do remote. <laughs> it is awesome. All Let's, right. So is you say Monday the seventh or Monday the fourteenth? Monday the fourteenth. I, I could do either. The seventh is the last week of school. So Let's not. do the fourteenth. <clears throat> You want it in person or you want it? You want remote or in person? I mean, did you just say remote? I said remote just because it's easier to pull together, but I, you know, we can all go to Conway and afterwards. <laughs> we say that, but we haven't. On the last meeting, we will. All right. Well, actually, it's kind of been not, it's, it's, kind, of, it's kind of been not legal for us to actually, but that's true. No. Now that now it will be right there, you go. All right, the 14th at six. Okay, Is that all right. Yeah, okay. Thank you, everybody. Can I, I have a motion to adjourn? Oh, June 5th. See you Saturday, June 5th, one o'clock, grammar school. All righty, town meeting. All right, we're adjourned. <laughs>